for blessing us with our family, Father God. Thank you for blessing us with this church, Father God. The pastor, the first lady, Father God. Please stand by his side, Father God. Thank you for the members. Father God, I ask you, when we leave this place, be with us, Father God, the rest of the week, Father God. Father God, touch these kids while they're in school, Father God. Help them lean towards her. Help them not lean towards their own ways, Father God, but acknowledge you in all their ways, Father God. Thank you for the men of the church, Father God. The leadership, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the air we believe, Father God. For the clothes on our back, for the shoes on our feet, the roof of our head, Father God. Thank you for all these blessings and all these many blessings I ask you in the sons, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. In your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 To God be the glory, honor, and the praise. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will pray unto the Lord. He my God and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noise of bellies. He shall shadow me, cover me with us with feathers, and under his wings I, I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, unless thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt on the lion and the arrow. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He has called upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Romans 16, 16 says, Salute one another with the Holy Kiss. The church of Christ salutes you. Just wave, just wave, just wave, just wave. At your brothers and sisters. So good to see you. I saw you Sunday, but it's good to see you win. See, I saw you Sunday, but it's good to see you win. See, I saw you Sunday, but it's good to see you on win. See, I saw you Sunday, but it's good to see you on win. They tell me that God's been good to you three days. Amen. Three days. Three days, and we have a couple more days to go. I put that mic in flip face. He got the shaking, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I got shaking. Cause y'all remember that time he preached? I quoted by myself, and I'm just let y'all help me out. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God. To God be the glory. Bro, that did good. Flip got the shaking. I said, Flip, what happened? Boy, you got shaking over here. Amen, amen, amen. Good to see y'all coming in on tonight. Amen. Good to see y'all coming in. Come on into the room. Amen. Come on in. Amen. I tell you, when I see y'all on Wednesday, I just get a little bit more happier. Amen. Amen. My day goes better. My week goes better. I get a chance to be with the people I love the most. And it is the church. I must say that I spend more time with the church folks than my own folks. Amen. And so I'm not complaining because that was God's will that church folks will be closer than family folk. Yes, and because these are the ones that we, we, we cry out to to draw closer to God. Yes. Romans 10. Now, I, I got to get with Johnny. I got to get with Johnny because there has to be a misunderstanding because he's still in nine, but we made it to 10. Raise your hand if you remember we made it to 10. Remember we talked about uh, Paul's desire that Israel that may be saved. We got to Romans uh, 10, and that's what we'll begin on tonight, uh, Romans 10. Let's start in verse number 1. Heavenly Father, thank you. Bless us in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. amen. Keisha, thank you for such a beautiful prayer. Amen. amen. <laughs> it's good to see old brother Bill in the house. Y'all wave at old brother Bill. Put a camera on brother Bill. Amen. We got a historian in, in the flesh to hear with us on tonight. So the whole world can see you right there, Bill. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. And, um, I'm just so God, glad God sent me his way. Let me tell you how we met. Let me tell you how God worked. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Bill got that long hair, y'all. He got that long hair. <laughs> he was in the gym working out. And I said, man, how long you been growing your hair? 
He said, well, about two years. And I said, man, you have to grow pretty fast in two years. And he said, my name Bill. I said, my name Stephen. He's like, Stephen. I said, yeah, Pastor Stephen Gill. He said, I've been trying to get in touch with you for the last two weeks. Wow. Wow. Somebody told me about you and I've been trying to get your contact information. And I'm telling you, you can't make that kind of stuff yes, up. Sir. And so the, the rest is history. He, he, his grandfather was a, a legend in the Sheffield community, born in 1881. He, um, he had a, he pastored a church on 18th Street, yeah. built the um, built his own church building. He was a carpenter by trade, well educated man, uh, uh, who was a part of the Black Wall Street of Sheffield, Alabama. Wow! Before white supremacy came in and burnt all those buildings, he even told me about there were black millionaires right here in Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much did the black doctor charge? Uh, the doctor visit was three dollars. How much the white doctors were across the track? Five. And the white members started coming over here to Sheffield because they got a better deal at the doctor, which made the black doctors wealthy. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. So, yeah, we, I got to set up a day that I just let Bill talk. We're going to bring him in one day and just let him do a seminar. He's going back to New York in a couple of days. But when you get back, let me know. We're going to set up a day that you do a seminar and you give us this rich history because you are uh, a breath of fresh air, my brother. Romans 10. Romans 10. And Sterling is a place where we love to be educated. Amen? Amen. We want to be educated on God and we want to be educated of who, on who we are as a black people, black persons. So we thank you uh, for being in our presence on tonight. Romans 10. All right. Verse number one. I want to see if y'all going to catch something. I'm not going to say a word. I want to see if y'all going to catch this. We talked about prayer on Sunday and I want to see if you're going to catch this. Let's get a read for verse number one. Brothers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that they might be saved. Okay, that they might be what? Saved. They might be what? Saved. Keep your hand right there. Go to go to Second Peter 3. I want to see if you're gonna catch this. I'm gonna see if you're gonna catch this. Second Peter 3. When you get that say amen. Second Peter is right after first Peter. Shouldn't be that hard to find. When you get that say amen, if you're not say wait. Amen. A preacher friend said he was doing a revival in Chicago. A sister said, wait. He, she looked up, he and she didn't even have a Bible. Have a Bible. Amen. He said, I don't have that long. Wait. Amen. Second Peter 2. Uh, I mean, Second Peter 3. You there? Let's get a read for verse number 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Uh-huh. As some count slackness. Uh-huh. But is long-suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish. Uh-huh. Okay, what's another word we can put right there? All shall be what? Saved. All shall be what? Saved. So what did Paul just do in Romans 10? For somebody I haven't spoke to. What is Paul doing in Romans 10 when he said, My prayer for Israel is that they may be saved. How is Paul praying? But how do we, what do we talk about on Sunday? How is Paul praying? He's praying according to God's will. Because whenever you pray the word of God, you're praying according to God's will. Uh -huh. We talked about the only thing that God wants to hear is his will. Yes. So God's will is that no one should perish. It's God's desire for everyone to be saved. And Paul said, my prayer is everyone may be saved. So that's how you pray according to the will of God. You pray God's word. If God's word said it, then that's God's will. So that's what God wants to hear. So when you pray according to God's will, we already know that the Holy Spirit don't have to take a lot out. <laughs> when do we have to worry about the Holy Spirit taking a lot out of our prayer? It's when we say things that don't line up with God's will. So by the time it makes it to God's desk, uh, it, it has been filtered so much that the only thing God wants to hear is his will. So whenever you're praying for family members to be saved, it's, you can guarantee that that male is going to make it to heaven's gate. Why? Because now I'm learning how to pray according to God's will. Okay, I just want to show you that, but we're actually down in verse number 10. So let's go to Romans uh, Romans 10, verse 10. Now, tonight I want to debunk a major lie. Tonight we're going to deal with the major lie that you see propagated all around the world. I heard Joel Austin say that. I heard Creflo Dollar say it. And we're going to deal with it on tonight when people say, brothers and sisters, the doors of the church are open. All you have to do is come on down to the altar. 
repeat this prayer after me. Tell God to come into your heart. And my brother, you're going to leave saved. So now we're going to deal with the confession of faith. That's what they call it. The confession of faith. You don't have to be baptized. All you have to do is make a confession of faith and you'll be saved. We're going to deal with that. And I'm going to show you the verse they get it from. And they take this one verse and built the whole doctrine off right, of it. Right. And they stopped at that one verse, but they didn't keep reading and you have thousands of people leaving the church thinking they're saved because they told God to come in their heart. Nowhere in biblical history do we find someone receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit by simply telling God to come in their heart. Amen. They had to be baptized. Amen. And I'm going to show you on tonight how when you're studying with somebody who believes this, how you can walk them through scripture to show them it did not stop with that one verse. And when he's talking about the heart, he's really talking about believing in Jesus with all your heart. But there's other steps to it. Amen. Amen. Romans 10, verse number 10. Let's get a read for verse number 10. For with the heart, man believeth to righteousness. Uh-huh. With the mouth confesses, confession is made. May where? What's the word after may? Unto. Does anybody know what unto me? That means it's more steps. Yes, it's unto salvation. Yes, mm -hmm. So it's part of the process and it's vitally important, but that one word changes everything. Salvation is made unto. That means it's part of the process. But it doesn't stop there. Read that one more time. I'm going to show you what it means right here. I'm going to show you what it means. Go read that one more time. Now, my Bible don't say unto the heart. Uh, okay, King Javer. Let me get a King Javer. But with the heart, man believes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And with the mouth, confession is made unto the heart. Watch this, y'all. This is so good, y'all. This is so good already. Now, go to Romans 12, verse number 3. Uh, Romans 12, verse number 3. Let's get a read of verse number 3. Because we all started off at the same starting point with that measure of faith. And that measure of faith gave you enough gave you enough faith to believe with your heart. And that's why it says, for with the heart, man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made. So when God opens your mouth, he gives you enough faith to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But it's not the end process. You got to keep going. There's more step. And then we're going to go and find an example of how this is really, how this really works in the life of a believer. So when a person, we talked about this person coming to church. Man, I don't know why I visit that church, man. I ain't going to listen to none of that preacher got to say. Mama, that made me come to church. I want to stay on the block with the boys, man. I ain't going to block him out. I'm going to block him out. I ain't going to hear that. And then the word get to moving. And the spirit get to moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you find yourself a little uncomfortable. You move, and you know, the, the word getting to him, you know, he, he uncomfortable. And now it's feel like the preacher talking to him. And, you know, Lord, I want to go to the bathroom, but I'm scared these folk going to look at me. But, but th th this word getting to me, it's getting to me. And now he's sweating. And now he's tearing up. And why am I crying? I'm a thug. I'm a thug. I'm supposed to be crying. I'm supposed to be crying. What is this getting to me? What is this getting to me? And next thing you know, does anybody want to be saved? He find his, he's finding his way walking up here. Wow. So now the spirit has dealt to that brother a measure of faith. He don't know what made him get up and walk. He came with his mind made up. I'm going to block him out. I don't want to hear him. I don't want to listen. But the spirit is moving. He can't deny it. And so that's why God said nobody will have an excuse when we stand before the bar of judgment. That spirit that's trying to move you was your measure of faith. But God gave you free will to deny it or to accept. 
accept it. The Spirit moves through the church and it gives everybody a measure of faith to start off with. And it's up to that person. That's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mama can't make you take that measure of faith and say yes to God. Daddy can't make you take that measure of faith and say yes to God. It's totally up to the believer. So that's what it means in verse number 10. For with the heart, man believe it. How does he believe it? Because God gave him a measure of faith. Unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession, confession is made unto salvation. Okay, verse number 11. I told you it's more to salvation. You have to keep reading. And what most people do, they take that one verse and run off with it and build a whole denomination of one verse. But that's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman needed not be a chain, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm going to give you this, and we're going to go find an example how all this works. Okay, let's keep going. Keep going. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Uh-huh. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that is called that calls upon him. Uh-huh. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, if many people read that, all I gotta do is say, Lord, save me. I call on his name, we'll say. You gotta keep reading. Uh -huh. And when you break that word down, call in the original Greek, it means for whoever shall make a request. Shall be saved. Request is what we read about in Acts 23. And when they heard the word of God, they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, What must I do to be saved? That means they called on the name of the Lord. They made a request. So what God is saying, if anybody make a request on what can I do to be saved, God, by his infinite power, is going to send somebody to you to give you the answers. That's going to lead unto salvation. So whosoever should make a request on Lord, how do I find you? God is going to send somebody to tell you how do you find the Lord. That's how powerful God is. Did you get that? Anybody who cries out to God and make a request, Lord, I don't know how to find you. Lord, I just want to be saved. I, I want to be saved. You just made a request. Now God is going to anoint a leader. God is going to anoint a, 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 a messenger to send that messenger your way. And before you leave here, you're going to get answers on how to get to the Lord. So let's keep going. Keep going. Uh huh. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? See? Hold on, stop, hold on, stop, hold on. Mama ready, boy. Mama ready. Just run on, run on, run on. Moses, run on. Amen. So watch this. So that debunks the lie when somebody said, Well, I found Jesus in my hotel room. I told Jesus come in my heart. I was saved. That debunks that because there's no salvation unless you hear something. You got to hear the gospel. So that means you do not find salvation on your own. There's something that must be heard from the ear of the believer uh, in order for you to believe the gospel. So he says right here, how do you believe in whom you have not, how, uh, how shall they then call on him in whom they have not believed? And how do they believe in him in whom they have heard, not heard? Keep going. And how shall they hear without So that means there is no salvation without a who? There's no salvation without a who? That's his job is to tell people how to be saved. So when somebody said they found the Lord of God in their they room by themselves, that debunks the lie. You got to hear the good news. Wow. And the word good news is the same word we use for eulogy. When somebody said I'm going to do the eulogy of that man's funeral, that means to speak well of the dead. The word gospel, it also means good news. And it's the good news about somebody who was dead but now is alive. So the word gospel and eulogy is the same word in Greek. And I, t I was telling somebody just the other day, and I said, God, Lord, you got to work on my heart because I'm afraid there are certain people that if the family asked me to do the eulogy, I couldn't do it because I have nothing to speak well of them about. Mm. There's some people that cause so much hell at the church mm -hmm. and has been used by the devil so deep yeah. that if their family members ask me to do the eulogy, I'll have to pass it on to another minister. Because it means to speak well of the wonderful works they did for the kingdom. Wow. Mm. Couldn't do it with a clear conscience. Because right. they did more division, more than bringing people together. Yeah. Mm. 
And I just had to confess that to God last night. There are certain people that are going to leave here and I'm going to have to pass. You. Because what I have discovered, they may be an angel to somebody else. So since he showed you his angel side, speak well of that. Because he showed me his devil side. Wow. So what may be angelic to you is demonic to me. Because it has to be something about my spirit that brings the demon out of him. And something about your spirit that brings the angel out of him. So you do the eulogy on the angelic side of him. Watch this. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Verse number 15. Okay, how do you know? Oh, this is going to mess y'all up. Watch this now. This is going to mess y'all up. Uh, watch this now. Uh, watch this. I want you to go here. I want you to go here. I want you to go here. Uh, go to, because somebody, somebody may be asking, well, I, you know, you know, if somebody's a preacher, how do we know if they're really sent by God? Go to 1 Peter 4. Because we got a lot of people that got churches, but are they a preacher? Because God said the, def the definition of a preacher is that he must be sent. So now if he's sent, now we're going to go find out how do we know he's sent by God? Oh, go, to, go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, when you get that, say amen. Chapter 4, amen. when you get that, say amen. amen. Okay, let's get a reader for verse number 11. Mm -hmm. Of the what? So if he's sent by God, he's going to line up everything he's saying with the word of God. So if you're telling me, preacher, that I can be saved by telling God to come in my heart, show me where the oracles of God say that at. Wow. If I can be saved by just telling God to come in my heart and I believe in you come in my heart and I'm saved and I lead the church by saying that prayer, then if you are truly sent by God, you will show me book, chapter, and verse where somebody received the spirit by simply telling God to come in their heart. So the definition of a preacher being sent, he's going to line precept on top of precept. He's going to give you book, chapter, and verse. And then he's going to give you an example where the oracles of God has already stated that. Okay, go back to Romans. I just want to show you that. We're going to deal with this tonight because I'm telling you, there's thousands of preachers preaching from the pulpit at the end of their sermon. Go, talk, go look at it online. Go look at the televangelists. They say nothing about being born again by baptism. And the Bible says every man must be born again. The Bible says baptism now saves you. The Bible says baptism gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that baptism adds you to the church. The Bible says that baptism adds your name to the Lamb's Book of Life. And nobody talks about that. But that's what the oracles of God speak about. Okay, let's pick back up in verse number uh, 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? Uh-huh. As it is written. Uh-huh. And you got to know how to read the Bible. That does not mean every preacher got pretty feet. <laughs> some of us got coins and some of us need, you know, need that thing scraped every now and then. So every now and then a fifth toe try to start growing. It's not talking about the physicality. It's talking about the honor that a man of God deserves for the work he does. Amen. 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 We got to learn how to read the Bible, y'all. Ooh, our preacher got pretty feet. Amen. You'll see something that'll run you up out the church. Amen. Amen. So preacher, keep your shoes on. I wear no flip-flops. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. makes so much sense. Watch this now. The young man comes to church. He makes his mind that I'm not going to hear that word. And as he gets to hearing the word, now faith is developed and it is that same faith that he receives a measure of faith. And it came because I'm hearing his word. 
about this man that died for me. And the Bible says I must die with him in baptism. And the Bible says if I just say yes to him, that he'll give me his spirit and he'll add me to the church. And no matter how messed up I am, he'll take me just the way I am. That's that marriage of faith that made it to his heart. And that marriage of faith opens his heart. And that's where the confession comes from. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Oh, this is good, y'all. Watch this now. Watch this now. Now I want you, my brothers and sisters, to go with me to Acts 16. Watch this now. This is so good. Go to Acts 16. Go to Acts 16. It's more than that, y'all. I told you, people said, well, where did that doctrine come from? That doctrine came from the 1950s and 60s when Billy Graham was doing major crusades. And Billy Graham was speaking to over 100,000 people in these auditoriums. They didn't want to go through the tedious effort of baptizing 60,000 people that came forward. So they tried to make salvation easy by making these people make a public confession. And they tried to contact them later to make sure they'll do baptism on another day. But they couldn't get in contact with some of them people. They lost contact. That many people gather, you're not going to be able to stay in touch with that many people. They didn't want to, you know, so people say, what did they should have done? If it took them a week to baptize all 100,000, they should have just did one by one and deal with the word. Say, don't try to water down the word of God to make salvation easy. And that doctrine came from Billy Graham and it moved on through the generations and other, other preachers took that doctrine. And before you know it, it became a household message, but it never came from the word of God. Look at Acts 16. Look at Acts 16. When you get this, amen. amen. Let's get a read for verse number 14. And a certain woman named Lydia. Mm hmm. A seller of the purpose of the city of Thyatira. Mm hmm. Which worshiped God. Mm hmm. Heard us. Did what? Heard us. Oh, this is so good, y'all. Y'all, all oh, the world gonna come together. How do you believe in him you have not heard? And how do you hear without a preacher? So now the preacher's there, and the woman heard something. I'm finna line this thing up for y'all. Keep going. Go, go, go. Confession is, y'all, did y'all get it? Yes, sir. See, see, y'all going, we going somewhere now. Right. With the heart, man, believe it. Now, look at God talking about the heart. Why? Because she heard something. She received that measure of faith. Now, that measure of faith opened up her heart. Yes. Which is her mind. Yes. Okay, keep going. How did he open? Because she heard the word. And God said, well, my dear sister, here's your measure of faith. Are you going to believe? Because I start everybody in my kingdom off with a measure of faith. Now, it's up to you from, to grow from faith to faith. But I'm going to start you off with a measure of faith. Wow. Keep going. That she attended until the things which were spoken of Paul. Wow. Uh, of who? Oh. What's another word for Paul? His feet, beautiful. Preacher. Preacher. How do you hear without? Look how distinct the Bible is when it comes to lining this up with Romans chapter 10. It was never meant for us to tell people they can just tell God to come in their heart. What it's saying is God will open your heart after you hear the message about a man that died, yes. rose from the grave, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he died for you. And all you have to do is hear the message. He'll give you a measure of faith to open up your heart. And why your heart is still, and that's why the Bible says, the day you hear the word of God, please do not harden. What he's saying is use your free will to say yes. Don't say no, because you may not ever get this measure of faith again. Wow. The day you hear my voice, how do you hear God's voice? Because God, that's why the Bible says the preacher is the angel of the house. He's the messenger. I left messengers down there that's going to speak the oracles of God. And when you hear the oracles of God, it's going to automatically open your heart. That's why I said the preaching of God's word is so powerful because God is doing something to people's heart, and I can't see that. I just see people sitting in the audience looking at me, but man, that Holy Spirit is saying so much to your heart. You may not ever tell me what's really going on, but that Holy Spirit is working with your heart every time you hear the message about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's read that again. Start off in verse number 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of the house, which worshiped God, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended and took the things which were spoken of Paul. Uh huh. And when she was Whoa! You can't get around that, y'all. Yeah. You can't get around that, y'all. Mm -hmm. That measure of faith leads you to the water of grave to be born again. 
That measure of faith leads you to say yes to God. So no, it does not start. It does not stop with just making a confession. It's a confession unto salvation. Whenever it say unto, that means there's some three more steps. And then God put these narrative, narrated stories here to show us how the process works. So how do we know how to be saved? You got It's a continuity. We call it the continuity of scripture. Continuity comes from the root, root word continue. So whenever you see something, something continually mentioned all throughout the Bible, that's how we build enough biblical proof to say, if everybody went through this process, then this is what it takes to be saved. Let's go see the first time salvation is mentioned. Go to Acts 2. This is the first time the gospel is preached after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So if God wanted somebody to be saved by just telling him to come to the heart, God would have used the apostles to say that right here. Because this is the first time the gospel is preached after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that if God wanted to save somebody by just telling them to come in his heart, he would have used the apostles to say it at this moment because this is the moment that's going to set the narrative for the rest of the New Testament. Okay, let's get a read for verse number 37. Now when they, had heard they did what? Heard. They did what? Heard. How do you believe in him you have not heard? And how do you hear? Without a preacher, you will never find salvation in your hotel room by yourself. You need somebody that will teach you something. And when they teach you something about Jesus of Nazareth, something is going to move over you and open your heart to have enough faith to believe. Amen. Keep going. They were pricked in their heart. Wow. And said unto Peter. Who's Peter? Preacher. Who's Peter? Preacher. How do he hear without a preacher? And how do he preach unless he be sent? If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. So that means Peter is about to give her the oracles of God. Yeah. Come on. Oh man, this is good, y'all. Yes, Keep going. And to the rest of the apostles. Uh huh. Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's what it means to call on the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. God will send somebody to you to tell you how to get to the Lord. Amen. Man, this is good. Keep going. Then Peter said unto them, uh -huh. Repent uh -huh. and be baptized, yeah. every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And if you do that, with that measure of faith, what's going to happen? He shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, that's heavy, y'all. So even when Jesus was alive, he said something. Go to Mark 16. That's why the last, I tell people all the time, when Medea's about to die and the family gathers around the bed, right. you better listen to what Medea has to say. Because she's not, to, she's not about to waste her last breath telling you many, meaningless things. Jesus' last words before he was ascended was, go ye into the world. Make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So if that's the last thing he said, that's the most important thing it is, being saved. Being saved is more than preaching about money. Being saved is more important about who got the fastest car. Being saved, salvation is, is most important and no preachers are talking about salvation. Okay, look at Mark 16, verse 15. Let's get somebody to read other macro. Micro, the only one in the house tonight. Amen. 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 How much of the world? All. Uh huh. All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh huh. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoa! Hold on, stop, 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 stop. How do he believe? I mean, he heard something. He heard this. This is Jesus teaching this before his death. Go into the world and teach all nations. The, the, the word nation comes from the Greek word ethnos. That's where we get the English word from ethnicity. He said, I want every ethnic group to hear about the gospel. That's why the Bible said when Jesus returned, all nations shall stand before him. All ethnicities from everywhere around the world will stand before him. And it's going to be a shame on the church when he said, you know what, Jesus, nobody came to preach to me. 
They just went to church on Sunday. Nobody told me about you. They just clapped on Sunday, but nobody told me about you. And that's what's wrong. We got people coming to church on Sunday, but ain't nobody going to work telling people how to be saved. And they think it's just a preacher job, but anybody who belongs to Jesus, it's your job to lead somebody to salvation. Amen. And it's going to be a shame that you're going to get before God and God going to say, how many people did you lead to me? Well, Lord, I thought I was just supposed to go to church on Sunday. Come on. I went to church every Sunday. You had kids, family member, and you didn't lead nobody to be saved. Yes. Amen. Read that again. Start at verse number 15. Mm -hmm. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Do you know what it means to not believe? When the measure of faith reaches you, you deny. Amen. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That means to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. When that marriage of faith reach your heart, uh, I ain't going to accept it. Amen. And you just missed out on your salvation. Amen. That's why it can't be forgiven because every time it reached you, you denied and didn't believe. And you got people telling you, well, you know, if you do this, you're going to hell. No, everything can be forgiven except rejecting Jesus. Ain't that powerful? That is powerful. That there's no sin that God can't forgive. I don't care how you messed up. Grace and mercy can find you no matter where you are. Don't let nobody lie to you like grace and mercy can find you. God has a measure of faith waiting on a murderer. God has a measure of faith waiting on a rapist. God has a measure of faith waiting on the thief. God has a measure of faith waiting on the liar. God has a measure of faith waiting on the whoremonger. God has a measure of faith waiting on the prostitute. How do you know it? Rahab has faith. Yes, sir. There's no sin. That God came from, well, that sister went through a divorce, so we ain't going to let her come back in the church. Man, I feel so sorry for them people that talk that mess. Grace and mercy still can catch that sister. Amen. Amen. Mm. Wow. On time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. Go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. So they took that one verse with the heart man believing, and they stopped right there. You can't stop that. You got to keep studying to show yourself approved. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Look at Matthew 28. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Let's get a reading for verse number 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. How many? Notice, notice, notice. People say, oh, the world coming to an end. Look what the Bible said about the world coming to an end. The Bible said the end will not come until the gospel reaches every ethnicity. Amen. Jesus said, and then the end will come. Yes, it may get bad in the world, and it's going to continue to worsen. But the Bible said God will not allow Jesus to return until this gospel is preached to every ethnos. So actually... God is waiting on the church to send Jesus back. Come on, come on. God said, when my church get busy enough to take the gospel to every person, why every person? Because I don't want nobody to stand up and say, I never received that marriage of faith. Yes. God going to remind you, remember that woman at the grocery store bought you a business card, and that business card said, he that believe in his baptized shall be saved, he that believe in not shall be condemned. That was me speaking to you that day. Right. No one would stand before God and have not heard the gospel. I'll never forget Preaching in Mississippi, an 80 year old sister came down the aisle and said, Pastor, I want to be baptized. Amen. I've been in the church all my life, and I never heard that I must be born again. Yeah. Mm. That take an honest heart to be up in age and say, You know what? I don't think I did that correctly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Paul said, Make your calling and your election uh -huh. sure. Okay, keep going. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 
Amen. Watch this now. I hear so many preachers brag on, oh, we went to Africa and we preached the gospel. I tell you, I, I had a good old mission trip. They are so quick to go to Africa because they, they're scared to go to the projects. Amen. So they'll go to a third world country where people will be more receptive because they don't want to go to the dangerous area. But if you get really got the Holy Ghost with you, there's no place in the world that you cannot go and take God with you because when you go, God goes with you. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be with you. There's no bullet that can stop you. There's no grenade that can stop you. Where the Spirit of God is, there's freedom, there's liberty, and God will turn the vice lord around. God will turn the gangster around. But I need somebody bold enough to take the gospel to him. Preachers brag on going to third world countries and they don't know all the ghettos that they are flying over to get there. Notice Jesus told us how evangelism should go. He said it's starting in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and then all the uttermost parts of the world. He told us to work in and work our way out. Amen. Yes, sir. Not that it means anything to someone that I don't understand what all of us here gather about, but what you are saying is all that money, what they prepared themselves to go so far, and you got people that poverty in these in these projects. That, you know, if I, was living, if I was living like that, and you know, you coming up to me, you got uh, uh, McDonald's and French fry and hamburgers, and I ain't ate them, I ain't ate all day, yeah. and, I, and I ain't got nothing, no money to buy that. But you come to preach the gospel to me, but I got all this for you to have. Amen. You just sit here listen. Don't you know? That some of them plane tickets to go on mission trips be two thousand dollars. Don't you know the kids in the process we can feel right feed right here in Sheffield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the truth of the matter is, I really don't trust God to go into the ghetto, and I'm not gonna be bold enough to take it to them, so I'll go somewhere else because white folks love bragging on going to third world country. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I really don't want to touch these over here in Sheffield. Oh. So I go all the way to Africa because people in third world countries look at Caucasians as kings. Y'all didn't know that. People in third world countries, when they see the white man come up, we're not the only one that's been propagated by that uh, false teacher. So whenever they see a Caucasian man from the United States come over there, they look at him like a king because they have been taught that he has all the answers, not knowing that they're kings within themselves. So they love that type of they love that type of pride to be over there. And then they come back and do slideshows to their white congregation. We baptized over 300 black kids over there. His name is Walter. He's from the tribe of such and such. And all the people be like, oh. But nobody went to the ghetto right down the street. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on. Man, it's real talk. Come on, Prince. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sister Long had her hand up there and Sister Pinch. Mm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. Uh. In John 3, 34. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, John 3, 36. Mm -hmm. If I may. Mm -hmm. If I may. Read. Yes, ma'am. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, mm -hmm. but the wrath of God abideth on him. Mm -hmm. Then go again, y'all. Whoever rejects that measure of faith when it comes to you, if you receive it, you have everlasting life because it's going to lead you to the gospel. It's going to lead you to be born again. You got everlasting life. But if you reject that measure of faith and I'm not getting baptized, I'm not going to believe, I'm not going to believe, you have just now blasphemed the Holy Ghost. So now it's out of God's hand because he gave you a chance. That's why I cannot be forgiven because you're going to stand before God. He's going to say, did you accept the gospel? No, I didn't. That means you rejected me. That's In other words, you blasphemed me in the Holy Spirit. Ask, ask, ask eight real quick. I'm going to show you this and we're going to be wrapping it up. Wow. So that's where that teaching came from, y'all. I still go to churches and visit sometime now. And it just, it just, it, 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 it scratches my skin like fingernails on a chalkboard. When a preacher gets up there, all you got to do is tell God to come in your heart. Little brothers and little sisters, just tell God to come in your heart. There's nowhere in the Bible to say a prayer after the preacher and you're going to be saved. They're paying for the cameraman and they're paying for the cameraman all that stuff. Why they don't see you? 
Amen. Amen, Flip. Everybody say amen, Flip. Acts 8. Acts 8. Acts 8. Look at 26. Acts 8, 26. Look at Acts 8, 26. Let's get a reader. Who have not read yet. Come on. We got to get more people involved. And the angel of the Lord. Help us, Lord. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Who's Philip? Who's Philip? How do he believe in him who he had not heard? How do he hear without a preacher? So whenever we read about salvation, we find a preacher. And that's what I meant about a continuity of scripture. We continue to read the same process. That's how we can come to the conclusion, this is what you need to do to be saved. Okay. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, which is the preacher, saying, Arise. Watch this. Y'all never caught this. If God is calling Philip to go up and go and teach somebody, that means without us even hearing, the Ethiopian eunuch made a request. <laughs> I don't know where he was, but at some point in his life, Lord, I need to know you. They told me only Jews can be saved. And Lord, I just want to know you. I know I'm not a Jew, but Lord, I want to be saved. Can you please send somebody to me and tell me what I need to do to be saved? And the moment he said that, God sent somebody. God anointed somebody. Uh -huh. Just the fact. Watch this. Mm. Saying to Philip, arise, go toward the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem unto... Look how distinguished the instructions and the GPS uh, instructions and directions are direct because God knew exactly when that man was going to make it to where he needed to make it and him and the preacher was going to meet up at a divine time. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This man. See, that's why I tell God, man, you can't give up on people. There's some folks out there that are lost right now. And watch this. God already anointed a preacher to make his way to them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> they may be doing drugs right now. And they're at the bottom of their barrel. And they're on the verge of giving up. But they don't know that one day that they ask God to be saved. And one day they ask God to send somebody my way. And although they're on the verge of giving up, God is not about to let them die. He got somebody coming that way. And one day they'll look up and have a testimony of how they made it over. Because we serve a good God. All you got to do is call on his name. And when you call on his name, he may not come when you want him. But I tell you, he's going to come on time. He's going to lead you to him. And he's going to save your soul. And you're going to be thankful that you're part of the family of God. He's a good God, you know. If somebody has called on his name, he's sending somebody your way. Watch this now. I'm going to be preaching like this. ain't Sunday. Amen. Hold on. Slow down. I can't help it. Something come over me. Amen. Arise, go to the south, unto the way that go down to Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is the what? So that means if he would have made it to the river, he would have been in the wrong place. I need you to go to the desert. You get some people so sophisticated. Well, you need to be baptized to be saved. What if somebody in the desert in it? God left this story here for this. I done read into all kinds of stories when people try to argue me about baptism. Well, what if you in the desert? It ain't no water. God going to make sure it's some water. That's right. That's right. Because he won't tell you to be born again and don't provide the, 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 the correct use, essential uh, 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 products and material for you to do what God called you to do. Watch this now. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, that's our cousin, y'all, <laughs> what a good, amen, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charged all of her treasure, who had come to Jerusalem to for worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto the preacher, Go near and join thyself unto his chariot. And Philip did what? Ran. Salvation is so essential. It's so right now. He didn't jog. He didn't walk. He ran. I believe he heard Jesus in his spirit. Go ye into the world. Teach them all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'll be with you. Always, even to the end of the age. He heard Jesus in his spirit. So he ran. 
He knew that this was right now. And you have some preacher where we're going to baptize y'all two weeks from now. That's not biblical. Everywhere in the Bible when they heard the gospel, they got baptized right then and right there. Because it's a right now thing. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Then Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the book of Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? I need a preacher, I need a preacher, I don't understand. I need a preacher, I need a preacher, I don't understand. I need a preacher, I need a preacher, I don't understand. Watch this now. And he said, how can I accept some man come and guide me? What he was saying is break down to me what Isaiah is talking about. Because Isaiah is talking about a man that's going to come and die. Isaiah is talking about a man that's going to be led to the slaughter. Isaiah is talking about a man that's going to shed his blood. Isaiah is talking about a man who's going to rise on the third day. Isaiah is talking about a man that has all power and authority in his hand. Who is Isaiah talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My Lord. How can I accept some man guide me? And he desired the preacher that he should come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken from him. And who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. I can see the Ethiopian eunuch star crying at this point. The marriage of faith has finally made, made, made it to the, the, the chariot. Emotions are taking over him. His heart is now open to the gospel. The marriage of faith is right in his grabs. And he's not about to let this opportunity pass him by. In his mind, he's thinking about the night he called on the name of the Lord. And it's like God is moving in his life. And he knows for the very first time that the spirit of God is real. They told me that a black man couldn't be saved. They told me that only Jews can make it to heaven. But somewhere in this world, I just feel like God is with me in this chariot. I got chills all over my body. And something just not right. I feel like God is at my grasp. And the Bible says God is near unto them. They call on him. And I believe he's crying at this point. Because if I can obey this. I'm taking this back home to my son. I'm taking this back home to my daughter. If only I can just be accepted. I'm going to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Amen. See, that's what the Bible don't say, but this is what's going on in the chariot. Watch this. And the, and the eunuch answer Philip, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Is he speaking of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him. Y'all put y'all hands together for Jesus. He's the greatest phenomenon that ever comes to the rise of this world. He's God's son. He's the sinner savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality and philosophy. I wonder do you know him? I wonder do you know him on today? Amen. Amen. He preached unto him Jesus. He preached unto him Jesus. Come on, y'all, help me out. He preached unto him who? Jesus. He preached unto him who? Jesus. He preached unto him who? Jesus. The world needs to hear about who? Jesus. The gangster needs to hear about who? Jesus. The prostitute needs to hear about who? Jesus. Watch this now. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. Man, you can't make this up. Brother Mike, you can't make this up, Brother Mike. Yes, sir. That's the oracles of God. If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. Right. And here we find in another passage that the heart is open, yeah. the measure of faith is there, yeah. Jesus is preached, yeah. the good news about a man who died and got up is preached, yeah. and now the man is saying water, because you cannot enter the kingdom of God if you're not born again. Watch this now. Amen. And it came unto a certain water, uh -huh. and the eunuch said, See, here is wow. what stopping me to be. Here it is. And the preacher said unto him, If you believe it's what up, 
There you go. There go the heart right there. He never told him to say in your heart, Lord, save me. I'm going to be saved. He said, if you believe with your heart. Why? Because that measure of faith just opened his heart. So now he's about to make his salvation. I mean, he's going to make his confession because uh, confession is made with the, with the mouth unto salvation. Come on. Come on. Amen. Watch this now. If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest be saved. And he answered and said, Ah, but he made his confession unto salvation. So that means he's getting closer to salvation. <laughs> Here it is, y'all. He made his confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded, he said, well, whoever will drive the chair, well, stop the chair right now. Right now. You on my, my payroll. Stop the chair. He told his chauffeur, but you better stop this thing until I break. If the back break ain't working, hit the front break. Stop this thing. I mean, I don't get an opportunity like this again. He just hit the wheel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. All right. Watch this. Y'all ain't never catch this. Watch this. Look at Moses. When he was about to cross the Red Sea, he didn't know what to do. God said, stand still. Yes, sir. And see the Salvation. confession is made unto And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both yes, into the water. Yes, both the preacher and the eunuch. And he. And when they were come up out of the. See, that's when people be trying to get so deep. He ain't talking about actual water. They're trying to get so deep. He's talking about water, y'all. That's why he said, except the man be born again by the water and the spirit, he should not enter the kingdom of God. Watch this now. Watch this. And he went, and, and as they were coming, watch this now, as they were coming up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Why? Because somebody else is making a request. He got more work to do. Why did, why did God catch him up and take him to another city? And if you keep reading, Philip would have saved somebody else. Because somebody else was in the world saying, Lord, I want to know you. Watch this now. Watch this. And the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more. I want to tell you how powerful salvation. And the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. If somebody disappeared in front of me, yeah. Yeah. I'll be happy that I'm saved, but I'm going to be wondering, what's going on? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's going on, what's going on. Where did the preacher go? The man was so happy about salvation that he didn't even think twice about the man disappearing. All right. One, one question is that he, he, I'm going to pronounce it right. He was an eulistic mm -hmm. uh, chapter in the verse beginning of the Bible. Mm -hmm. When it said in the beginning, uh, God created heaven and earth. Uh -huh. And uh, it was without form and void. Mm -hmm. and darkness mm -hmm. was upon the face of the deep. Uh huh. And the spirit uh -huh. of God moved upon the face of the water. Yes. Yes. Right. See, this stuff goes deep. See, God had a plan way back then. <laughs> that connection. Hold on, I'm going to show you this one thing. We're going to be done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to first, John. Thank you, Flipper. Thank you, Flipper. <laughs> Flipper ain't crazy, y'all. Thank you. Like, Flipper knows some stuff. Y'all be sleeping on Flipper. Flipper knows some stuff. Uh, <laughs> Flipper been in that word. Y'all sleeping on Flipper. Uh, Flip. Okay, go to first, John 5. We're going to end with this, y'all. Thank y'all for being so patient. Amen. Thank y'all for being so patient. Thank y'all for being so patient. First John 5, when you get that, say amen. amen. Let's get a reading for verse number 6, who read it loud and proud. Verse number 6. This is he that came by water and blood. Uh-huh. 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 Wait right there. When they pierced Jesus in his side on the cross, it hit an artery that contains both water and blood. And if you remember the people that was mocking Jesus, they said, like, we're not worried about that. Let his blood be on our own hands. Not knowing you're going to need that blood to be saved. Yeah. They didn't know that they were prophesying. You're going, need it on, you're going to need it more on your hand. You're going to need it over your body. Mercy, God. Keep going. But by water and blood, and it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. Uh-huh. 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 And these three are one. Uh-huh. Verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in 
Uh-huh. The spirit. The water. The blood. You can't make this up. <laughs> God said when somebody receives that marriage of faith and go down in the water, they come in contact with the blood. And they come in contact with my spirit. And that's why Peter said unto the Peter said unto the people in Acts 2:38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because that's where the blood is gonna come from, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin, that's who's gonna forgive you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The water, the blood, and the spirit all take place, and all are one when somebody re receives that measure of faith. When they come to the baptism pool. All three of those entities are working as one. Put your hands together. You've been blessed on tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So when people ask it, why y'all always teaching about baptism? That's why. That's how you find Jesus. That's how you become one with him. That's how your name is added to the book of life. And once you're part of his family, I'm so glad he don't kick us out of family because we don't always do right. Put your hands together for that. Amen. Because the Bible says the Spirit seals you to the day of redemption. That means it seals you until Jesus return a second time. He don't kick you out of family because you sin a couple of times or make mistakes. You just come to him and confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive 